most of the candidates fell in the SQL interview, not because they don't know the SQL. The main reason is they don't know about these trade-offs. Whenever you are sitting in a data engineering interview, the interviewer want to know, do you have the understanding of trade-off? They are not there to test your memory. Instead, they want to know that how you take the decision. Because when you are building a data pipeline, you have to take a lot of decision. And each decision is on the basis of trade-off. Today in this video, I will show you how to talk about the trade-offs in the interview. The question number one, types of indexes. This is the one of the favorite question of the interviewers. And in 80% of your SQL interview, they will ask this question in any form. The interviewer goal here is to understand, do you have the understanding when you use the indexes, what are the trade-offs you are doing? A normal candidate will answer this question something as a cluster index shows the data physically one after one. A non-cluster is a logical and use pointers to show the location and a composite index uses multiple columns. Uh, this is a textbook definition but there you are sitting as a data engineer and data engineer play a lot on the OLF system. OLF system means indexes. So they want a deep understanding of indexes when you are sitting in an interview. So in this type of question don't directly jump to the answer. First, talk about the trade-offs. Something as when I think about the indexes, the core trade-off I am always balancing is query performance versus writing in database. An index can make reads dramatically faster, but every index you add slows down your write operations. My choice of index depends entirely on the balance. Here, you didn't give direct answer, but you have talked about the trade-offs. Now, jump to the answer. Technically, a cluster index has the physical storage of rows, so you only get one per table. A non-cluster index is a separate data structure, like an index in the back of a book. Let's point back to the data rows. For composite indexes, the order of column is crucial because it determines how index can be used efficiently. Now you have given a very good definition about the indexes. To add cherry on the top, talk about the production story as well. In production, my strategy is totally different for the OLTP system versus OLF system. For transitional databases with heavy writes, I am cautious about using indexes. But for the analytic databases, I always use the covering indexes aggressively to cut down I.O. Because a query that reads from only the index is the fastest query you can get. Once you have talked about the production story, give a personal touch with your own story. I had a situation once where a crucial fact table with 200 million rows had slow dashboard queries. The first insight might to add several single column indexes. But that would have killed our data ingestion pipeline speed. Instead, we analyzed the queries and added a single carefully designed composite index on order ID and created date. This one index served 80% of the dashboard's needs and cut the query time from 3 minutes to just 10 seconds with minimal impact on our ETL writes. See, in this way, a very simple question, you have answered this question very deeply. With this answer, the interviewer will get impressed that you have very deep knowledge about the indexes. Let's move to the next question. Question number 2. What is a CTE? With this question, the interview goal is to understand, do you prioritize the clean coding or do you prioritize the performance? A normal candidate will answer this question something as a CTE or common table expression is a temporary result set that you can reference in your query. As a data engineer, you have to play with CTE a lot. So you have to answer this in a little deep way. Something as I use CTEs all the time. For me, they represent a critical trade-off between readability and the performance. They make complex query easier to read and maintain. But it's crucial to know how the database engine actually executes them. So before coming to the definition, you have talked about the trade-off. Once you have done this, now talk about the definition. A CTE is a named temporary result set defined with a with clause. They are fantastic for breaking down the complex calculation into logical and readable steps. They also unlock powerful functionality like recursive queries, which are perfect for navigating hierarchical data like an organization chart. In this answer, you have mentioned the recursive queries as well. This gives the indication to the interviewer that you have understanding of writing recursive CTE as well. After this, talk about your production story. In production, I use CTE to structure my staging queries in dbt or airflow, making the transformation logic crystal clear. However, I am always aware that in systems like Postgres or older version of MySQL, CTE can act as an optimization fence, which can sometimes lead to slower query performance than a sub query. After giving the production story, try to give your personal story as well. I once refactored a huge nested query into 5 sequential CTE. It was beautiful and easy to read, but performance dropped. I realized one of the early CTE was being recalculated multiple times. By saving that one CTE, result of temp table and the having the other CTEs read from that. I got both readability and the 80% reduction in the runtime. 
this was a simple question and a normal candidate will end this question in just 10 to 20 second but as an experienced candidate now you are answering for a minute or two interviewer will know how deep you know this equal let's move to the third question the question number three normalization versus denormalization this is again one of the favorite question of the interviewers the interviewer goal here is to understand which one to use where and what are the trade-offs of using them the candidate will answer this question something as normalization reduces the data redundancy while denormalization improves query performance so according to our framework we will talk about the trade-off first then we will jump to the definition let's start with the trade-off this is the fundamental trade-off in the data modeling data integrity versus query speed there is no single right answer the choice completely depends on the system purpose where it is a OLTP or the OLF as now we have talked about the trade-off now we will give the definition of each of them a normalized design typically to third normal form is the perfect for transactional system like a production application database it eliminates the redundancy prevents the data modification and ensures the data integrity in rock solid form you have one source of truth for each of the information now we will talk about the denormalization as a data engineer my job is often to take that beautifully normalized data and strategically denormalize it for the analytical system for analytics you want to minimize the complex joins and provide very fast query performance for the reporting and dashboards. So we intentionally duplicate data to create wide flat tables. We trade a little storage and integrity for massive gains in the query speed. There will be some question where you cannot give any kind of production story or your own story. In that kind of questions, you try to give an example. Something as a great example is an e-commerce system. The application database will be highly normalized with tables for the customer orders, products and so on. But for the data warehouse, I would build a denormalized style schema. We will create a central fact table for the orders and join it with the dimensions tables like dimension customer, dimension product. During the ETL and ELT process, this means a business analyst can query a single wide table and get answers in just seconds. Instead of writing a five table joins that takes minutes to run this production database. The question number four, coalesce. With this question, the interviewer goal is to understand, have you handled the nulls in your data pipeline? The textbook answer will be, coalesce returns the first non-null value from the list of the arguments. But we won't give the direct answers, right? We will talk about the trade-off and then we will go to the definitions. Something as, coalesce is one of my go functions for building the robust data pipelines. I see it as a tool for the managing the trade-off between pipeline robustness and the silent data failures. Nulls can silently break the aggregations, joins or the calculations and a coalesce is the explicit way to handle them. Now you will answer this question in a deep way. Something as it's an ANSI standard function that takes multiple arguments and returns the first one that isn't null. I prefer it over vendor specific functions like isNull or NVL because it's more portable across different databases, which is important when you are working in multi cloud environment. In this question, you should give the production history for sure. In production, I use everywhere. I use it in data cleaning steps to set the default values like coalesce and then you can give like status unknown. Most importantly, I use this to prevent rows from being dropped during joins. If you join on a key that might be null, the join fails. But if you coalesce the key to default value like minus one on both of the side, you can ensure those records are both correctly matched and handled. Now it's time to give your own story. We had an issue where our sales reports were missing all guest checkouts. It turned out the customer ID was null for those results. So they were being dropped when we joined the orders table to the customer table. The fix was simple. In our transformation layer, we changed the key to polis minus one. Instantly, our revenue reporting become 100% accurate. The last question, the fifth question, the explain keyword. The interview goal here is to understand, do you really optimize the query when the query is not performing well? The textbook answer will be, Explains shows the query execution plan, which help in the optimization. With our framework, we will talk about the trade-off and then we will give the definition. Something as 
the explain command is the source of truth for the query performance it helps me manage the trade off between my assumption about how a query should run versus the evidence of how it is actually running you can't optimize what you can't measure and explain is the primary measurement tool once we have talked about the trade off let's talk about the definition explain gives you the query planner strategy which join algorithm is chose what indexes is used or it elements how many rows it would process at each step the output look different across engine postgre mysql big query or snowflake but the core idea remains the same time to talk about how you use the explain in my day to day work before i merge any heavy query i run explain i'm primarily looking for the red flags like full table scans or on massive tables in cloud warehouses like snowflake or the big query i am looking at the things whether it's doing a costly uh, broadcast join where it should not do or how many slots or warehouses sources it is consuming to add the cherry you can also say once i have used the explain keyword i also use the analyze keyword even the interview haven't expected this type of answer for this simple question but as a data engineer candidate you have given so good answer that he or she will definitely gonna impress so as you see we haven't just given the definition we have talked about the trade offs we have talked about the cost and the performance this is how the real data engineers think this type of question definitely going to impress the interviewers and your selection chances will shoot up dramatically for gaining such practical knowledge on the data engineering just follow data with pranjal